Hello everyone, it's Kim here again. In the first video, we saw Mike talk about his challenges of reopening during COVID. Here in the second part, we'll hear what Mike has to say about technology and how it's helped him with his journey of reopening. Thank you for watching. So how has technology played a role in opening back up now? Um, well, it's been monumental. Um, you know, I can't imagine trying to have reopened 15 years ago as an industry, not even as a, as individual centers or, or maybe 20 or 25 years ago. But mm -hmm. between the token interactions, the, the touch points of yeah. the, those tokens being recycled, uh, paper tickets being reloaded and, and how often you're doing that. Um, the dust in the air from shredded tickets and tickets coming out that people wouldn't feel comfortable with. Oh, yeah. um, redemption interaction of, of counting tickets, taking those tickets, interacting with people versus just looking up an account number and um, all of those things. So technology has been applied across the board, everything from touchless payments, which is, has been helpful, right? So touchless is, is interesting as a term, but people are, are have very quickly migrated to more credit than uh, credit and debit versus cash mm -hmm. because they don't want cash and they don't want cash in return. So we've yeah. gone from 82% credit to much higher up in the high 90s and we're working our way to cashless or, or cashless from the perspective of team members interacting on cash. Um, but without technology to do any of that, it, it, it simply wouldn't work. So we've been very fortunate in that we've already been on the Seminox platform pre-COVID and that allowed us to be truly a touchless game card system because it's the only our, you know all RFID system that we had deployed. So there isn't anything to swipe and 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 have a direct touch point. Um, so that's been that's been very comfortable. The kiosks have been um, simple in that we have enough certainly for the volume that give a guest a, a good sense that they walking up to a kiosk that hadn't just been used or had been cleaned. Um, and then the game interaction, we're just cleaning games as often as we can. Uh, yeah. But without the technology. Uh, Without the technology applied to our industry more broadly, I'm not really sure that any of the centers in the, in the states would be open right now. I think there'd be too many contact points for people to be comfortable and, and give us the right to open. Yeah, exactly. So what are your thoughts on the upcoming fall? Oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> Can you read the future here? Question. So, um, you know, we're being down here in Florida, our seasons are different than other, other parts of the country or certainly parts of the world. Um, up north, their better season is winter. Our better season is summer. So we just came to the end of what our better season um, would have been. We certainly didn't perform anywhere near where we would have performed, whether it's year over year comparables or the ongoing growth that we had seen um, mm -hmm. for same store sales. And so coming into our what would be our off season, and this is leading into our slowest period, late October through November is our, our single slowest period. It's that middle of football season or beginning to middle of football season that there's nothing really exciting enough to go on. So the sports bar business isn't quite as busy. Um, kids are in school and they're getting ready for holidays, so they're not doing a whole lot of spending. So that, that's really our we're, we're leading into our slowest period. But okay. we typically fall off a cliff right now anyways because kids go back to school. Um, so going back to school, again, interesting term because nobody's back at school. They're they're back at home yeah. or at least in, in our markets. Um, oh, am so, I too? <laughs> so it, it's it's a little unknown. Um, I can tell you that we're looking at things that we've never looked at in the past, or or when we looked at, I was a, a, a um, I had a very strong opinion against it, and so we've seen centers historically close down certain days of the week or do limited hours during the week, and I have always felt that that was a real negative on the business. In that, if somebody showed up to our business at twelve o'clock on Monday and we weren't open, well, they may just never return because they don't know when we're open, right? Exactly. So, again, talking about technology, technology at this point allows us to communicate much more broadly. We can update our Google Maps app listing for hours. We can update our mm -hmm. Facebook. We can update our webpage. We can do what we can to communicate. Um, so this is the first time that we're actually looking at and talking about what hours of a day does it actually make sense to be open. So again, technology, we use Semnox completely broadly from a POS to HR to game cards and reservation and everything was on all in one system, as you know, and that's certainly a, a huge benefit to it. So we have hour by hour sales, we have trending that we can see and we can say, okay, what hours does it make sense to be open? What hours is it not? And it's not purely based on numbers. It's really based on guest interaction. So if a guest wants to show up, then we certainly want to be open, even if we're exactly. at that point. But if we can see hours that guests simply aren't showing up, well, then we can really make decisions that are a little bit more um, informed. So the technology piece has been helpful there. Um, so we're looking at um, potentially minimizing our hours during just a Monday through Thursday, doing uh, abridged hours and opening towards dinner. So when parents are getting home and their kids have been at school all day in their bedrooms, 
they may go out for dinner instead of sitting at home. Um, so we expect to see a little bit more um, day-to-day activity. I think people's schedules are a little bit more forgiving. So if the, if their child isn't asleep at, a, at the same time on a school night, but they're waking up and they're not held to a hard schedule, we think we'll see a little bit more activity. Um, as for the, excuse me one second, as for the uh, weekends, we've always seen our weekends go up when school's back in. And I mm-hmm. anticipate that these weekends would be a little bit more because the pent up demand of people having been quarantined and stuck at home and then now being stuck at home even more. Um, so I think we'll see a little bit more interaction. I can tell you, I've got two young girls um, and they certainly want to be out and they want to be seeing their friends and they would rather be at school. So I think that pent up demand of people wanting to get out and see some friends that they saw on Zoom meetings or team meetings or any of these things, um, yeah. we, we're hoping that our weekends have a little bit more um, traction, but um, really a lot of unknowns. I think the the hardest part is going to be determining uh, or see, when we see something come in, whether it's therapeutic or a vaccine that's truly accepted, um, has consumer behavior changed to the point where our business model is different, and we don't know we don't know that answer yet. And consumer behavior yeah. is the single biggest challenge that we're going to have as an industry to overcome. Whether it's that people have got more comfortable sitting at home, or we've lost sixty percent of our restaurants in the states, so people start to think think less about going out to dinner, even though we're a full service restaurant. They may mm-hmm. think less about going to dinner, so we may have a larger market share, but still be doing less business. A um, lot of unknowns. Um, so I, I, I think there's. Um, I think there's some challenges to come to answer your question specific to what I think. I think there's challenges to come that are completely unforeseen yet. I think that we're all yeah. going to look at something and go, how the heck did that come and land on our desk? And I, I think we, we still have a few of those to come.